Hello future pilots, aviation enthusiasts and frequent flyers. Welcome to CNTAA channel. I am Captain Neha Thakre, a captain on Airbus A320 and on this channel we talk about concepts related to aviation. Today we are going to talk about what passengers are most scared of and why seatbelt signs are always to be respected when flying on board an airplane. Yes my friends, you guessed it right. Today's topic to decipher is turbulence. So what is turbulence? What causes it? Are airplanes designed to withstand it? Should you really be scared of it? We are going to answer all these questions in this video. For better understanding of this concept, I have divided this video in two parts. First, types of turbulence. In this part, we will understand what causes it, different weather phenomena and other causes that affect the aircraft lift in different phases of flight and possibility of pilots to anticipate it in advance. We will also discuss what pilots do in order to avoid each type of turbulence or make the flight operation safe despite of it. Second, severity of turbulence. Severity of turbulence is categorized in three parts, light, moderate and severe turbulence. In this part, we will understand what are the signs that determine how severe is the encountered turbulence. Did you know that a Bombardier private jet en route to UAE once literally flipped over midair, performing an uncontrollable somersault, all because of specific type of turbulence? Yes, we will be talking about it in the later part of the video and also some other stories related to turbulence. And at last, we will understand what is expected of passengers in such situations. So fasten your seatbelt and let's get started. Speaking of types of turbulence, turbulence associated with clouds, clear air turbulence, wake turbulence, wind shear and microbursts, thermal or convective turbulence, mechanical turbulence and mountain waves are some primary types of turbulence. Let's understand each one of those. Turbulence associated with clouds. Cloud turbulence occurs when an aircraft flies through developing cumulus or cumulonimbus clouds. These clouds have strong updrafts and downdrafts vertical movement of air that create bumpy ride. Cumulonimbus clouds are also called CB clouds are particularly dangerous as they bring thunderstorms, severe turbulence, wind shear, hail and lightning. That's why pilots always avoid CB clouds. During the day, we can see them and navigate around them visually. While at night or in poor visibility, we rely on weather radar. As a rule of thumb, more a cloud is vertically developed, the more turbulence it is likely to have. Thin and wispy stratus clouds usually have little or no turbulence. If you enter such clouds, you may not notice any turbulence. Also, the density of air in clouds is constantly varying. As we have discussed in previous videos, lift is the function of Cl half rho v square s and rho is the density. Air mass containing water vapor has lower density than dry air mass and that is another reason for a bumpy ride while flying through the clouds. Second, clear air turbulence. As the name suggests, this type of turbulence is experienced in clear air, meaning there is no clouds or any visible indication of this turbulence. If passengers look outside the window while experiencing this turbulence, it's likely that skies are clear outside. Unlike cloud turbulence, clear air turbulence is invisible and unpredictable. It is mainly associated with jet streams. On January 22, 2025, an Airbus 350 flying from Las Vegas to London Heathrow set a world record of 814 miles per hour, that's almost 1310 km per hour of ground speed. This was only possible due to jet streams. Jet streams are fast moving air currents in upper atmosphere and are even more pronounced during winters. While jet streams help pilots save fuel and get to their destination faster while flying from west to east, on the other side, jet streams cause clear air turbulence or CAT. Jet streams can have winds exceeding 150 knots, that's about 
280 km per hour. When these high speed winds interact with slower moving air, they create eddies or turbulence. Since there are no visual clues like clouds, pilots rely on weather reports or pilot reports that is pireps and forecasts to anticipate it. Airline pilots also have access to upper level wind information prior to flight to anticipate the severity of turbulence they might experience during the flight. A major sign of this kind of turbulence is the shear factor within these jet streams. Pilots brief the cabin crew before flight about what is to be expected and when it is suitable to begin cabin service. This brief also covers if it is okay to serve hot beverages or otherwise, because hot beverages during turbulence may pose a risk of skin burning hazard to passengers. After experiencing this kind of turbulence, usually pilots get out of it by climbing or descending from the current level at which this turbulence is experienced in order to keep the ride safe and smooth. For passengers, what is the best way to stay safe during CAT? Keep your seat belts fastened at all times, even when the sign is off. Because despite of all the efforts from the flight deck, sometimes CAT is experienced without prior notice. Now let's talk about the most interesting part. Wake turbulence. Wake turbulence is generated by the aircraft itself. As the aircraft flies, the pressure difference between upper and lower wing surfaces create wingtip vortices, which are strong rotating air currents. Larger aircraft such as an Airbus A380 generates stronger wingtip vortices and wake turbulence, which can be dangerous to smaller planes flying behind them or on a reciprocal track. Wake turbulence is generated behind and below the airplane. Magnitude of wake turbulence depends on the type of aircraft and its category. For example, Airbus A380 is a super category aircraft and Cessna 172 is a light category of aircraft. Now imagine Cessna 172 flying behind Airbus A380. Would that literally be a safe flight? Definitely not. And hence, accordingly, pilots and air traffic controllers follow wake turbulence separation. This separation can be vertical and lateral separation during cruise and at the time of takeoff and landing, specific distance or time interval is maintained behind the preceding larger airplane at all times by pilots and ATC. Pilots also follow a procedure called as SLOP, which is strategic lateral offset procedure to avoid the wake turbulence from the aircraft which is flying ahead of you. Pilots take up to two nautical mile of lateral deviation from the airway in order to avoid the wake of heavier jets which are above and ahead of their aircraft. On January 7, 2017, a Bombardier business jet cruising at 34,000 feet unexpectedly hit the wake turbulence of massive Airbus A380 flying just 1,000 feet above. The private jet rolled three times, plunging nearly 9,000 feet of height, injuring its high net worth passengers and damaging the aircraft beyond repair. The pilots managed to regain control and make an emergency landing at Muscat. But this incident highlighted the severe damage and danger of wake turbulence at high altitudes. Then turbulence associated with wind shear. Wind shear is sudden change in wind direction and sudden change in wind speed or both. There can be increase in wind speed or decrease in wind speed, okay? So this wind shear is associated with something called as microburst. So microburst is a sudden forced downward movement of air which is really strong and that spreads outward as it reaches ground. Aircraft which are taking off and landing are most at risk. So if in case the aircraft is uh, going to land, then initially it will experience headwind, which is favorable. After that, the aircraft will experience downdraft because of which it will go very close to the ground, which is quite dangerous. Then it experiences tailwind. So its rate of descent increases. So this is quite dangerous and it can lead to aircraft slamming onto the ground when the aircraft is in final stages of approach to land where the thrust or power for approach is less. It is very important 
that pilots get a warning beforehand before the wind shear is approaching so there are wind shear detection wind shear, devices wind shear, wind or shear. there is predictive wind shear such devices and such uh, equipments are installed in the modern airplane so that the pilots can get a warning in advance before they actually enter wind shear if in case the pilot has actually already entered then yes pilot has to apply the maximum thrust and you know reject that particular approach or i would say execute a missed approach and uh, there are specific procedures for every type of airplane so that needs to be referred in that particular airplane manual but it is important that you apply maximum thrust so that you get maximum energy to overcome that situation and get out of it safely so that is the turbulence associated with wind shear then there is thermal or convective turbulence this turbulence is associated with high temperature so if you are flying on hot summer day then if you fly closer to the ground at lower level then you will experience this type of turbulence even if you are flying in the you know let's say in inland area where there is a lot of heat generated like for example in india in nagpur hyderabad jaipur delhi okay where there is hot temperature there you will experience lot of thermal currents these thermal currents are nothing but the air which is close to ground since it is lighter because of high temperature rises up pretty quick and faster and these up currents will push the aircraft and the turbulence is associated because of that and that is because of the convective currents or thermal currents if you are flying in the light or smaller airplane then these currents are more pronounced and you might experience severe turbulence in case of the uh, light airplanes okay that is about the thermal or convective turbulence then the last one mechanical turbulence this turbulence is associated with the mountains and if you fly closer to the mountain then you will be experiencing this type of turbulence which is uh, also known as mountain waves all right as you now understand types of turbulence let's understand what is the severity of turbulence and how to understand whether the turbulence experienced is light moderate or severe first we have light turbulence this feels like a gentle bump in the sky like a car going over a speed breaker you might notice your drink wobbling a bit but it won't spill walking around not too difficult for us pilots we will see small changes on the instruments but nothing that affects the control of the airplane then comes moderate turbulence now this one is stronger you will feel a definite strain against your seat belt and if you are walking it will be tough to keep your balance drinks likely to spill pilots may ask cabin crew to be seated and cabin crew avoids serving hot beverages during this time for passenger safety in the cockpit pilots see more noticeable changes in altitude speed but aircraft stays fully under control now the severe turbulence this is serious the aircraft can make sudden violent movements passengers and crew are thrown against their seat belts unsecured objects go flying and walking is impossible if you are not strapped in there is a real risk of injury as pilots we see large abrupt altitude changes and have to work hard to stabilize the aircraft pilots in the flight deck we always wear seat belts at all times whether there is turbulence or otherwise and i would encourage all the passengers to do the same at all times make sure to use the lavatory only when seat belt signs are off if you are in the lavatory and seat belt signs are turned on return back to your seat without any unnecessary delay and walk back to your seat with extra caution it may not always be possible to predict turbulence but pilots and cabin crew do everything we can to keep the ride smooth and safe that's all for today's topic of turbulence all of that said modern airplanes are designed to withstand turbulence and pilots are trained to avoid and mitigate the risk associated with it 
so you can sit back and relax while flying with your seat belts fastened at all times possible i hope that this video has helped you understand the concept of turbulence a little better if you are an aspiring pilot you may consider signing up for cnt AA's on demand demo training modules on cntaaonline.in at cnt AA, we make sure that aspiring pilots are trained in the best way possible for their dgc exams if you are an aviation enthusiast, you are welcome to share this video with your friends who experience a fear of flying because of turbulence. I hope that it will reassure him or her of the inherent safety of air travel.